Hey everybody, Bill1911 here. Hey, we're back for another gun show. Uh, we're going to have a good time today, go in look at a whole bunch of guns and enjoy ourselves. Uh, but I also wanted to let you know that we have opened up uh, merchandise on our website. So come and check us out. And uh, don't forget our email, if you want to send us an email, is askbill1911 at gmail.com. Now our website is askbill1911.com. Okay, this is, um, this is the Ruger Mark IV, so I wanted to show you this because uh, there's a real improvement over the Mark 1s, 2s, and 3s, and that's, if you look right here, this has a disassembly lever here that you can tip the whole action open to clean and disassemble the gun. On the older ones, you had to, to take the handle apart, pull a pin out through the bottom, and it was kind of a pain in the neck to put the thing back together. Um, I did a video on it, and you can watch it, but um, these new ones, these Mark IVs, are vastly superior in the way they disassemble and reassemble. And personally, I like this one because it's got the bull barrel on it. I like the heavier barrel, and the reason why is when your gun has weight to it, it's very stable. You'll get swing out of it, but you won't get shimmer. And shimmer is really hard to control on a light gun. Okay, this rifle is called an SKS. Now, this one has this top cover. Um, normally, these are made out of sheet metal, but this one is set up so it's got a very solid scope rail on it and it's with these screws it mounts solidly to the receiver so you're not going to get a lot of scope drift out of it so this is actually a really excellent scope mount on an SKS all right so um, this is it's a battle rifle it works really well it's semi-automatic it comes with a 10 round magazine but you can actually get these that are five round if you special order them from someplace like Sarco or something like that. So it is possible to get these with a five round magazine so that you can hunt with them. Now this shoots the same uh, cartridge as the AK-47 does. It's a 7.62x39. These are a little more accurate than the AK-47. Uh, this is a semi-automatic rifle um, and it's a slower firing solution, so it, it, it shoots a little a little slower, but it's pretty accurate. They're not bad. I've got a couple of these, and they're good guns. You know, Crocodile Dundee said, that's a knife. Well, this isn't a knife. This is an axe. I love this thing. Is that cool or what? Kind of reminds you of the old Nordic-style axes, you know? Kind of cool. A little battle axe there, you know? Medieval stuff. Pretty neat. Depending on what the situation is, our training, what we do is we turn people uh, from gun shooters into hopefully a gunfighter if it, God forbid they have to use it, but at least you're going to know gun safety, gun handling, gun shooting, and gun fighting. Teach a little situational awareness so that when you see my friend here, you know every single time what to do and be able to react in the way you're supposed to react and do the right things so that hopefully you can save yourself, even sometimes Malo, if we have to, or bad guy and, and thug, we have to do that. But otherwise, if you do have a problem, you're not going to have any issues later on and, and hopefully everybody goes home and everybody's safe. But you got to train. Everybody's got to train. Well, I'm coming up on a doorway and I've got my gun way out in front of me like this. Guess what? It gets to that open doorway a long time before I... It also does this to you, my friend. Let's make this an open. If I'm in the door here, I'm inside. You're inside. Go ahead, start doing what you're doing. I just got your gun. That's exactly the point I'm coming to. And I'm the bad guy. Remember, I'm this guy. You don't want to be that guy. So instead, you may want to, first of all, come out here. Yeah, you want to work your corners. Exactly. That's it. Right. Yeah. So that when you see him waiting for you, you win that battle. But you know what? You have people that come in with Hollywood mentality, and they walk up to the door like this, and they think they're fine, and they're not. That's 99% so, of the folks out there who are carrying weapons. And that's what not having training will do. I can assure you those people are going to lose every time. Does it allow you to train? Are you still able to do any kind of training? I'm limited. But, you know, as long as you can stand, my friend, you, uh, you can defend yourself. 
Training is, is key. Anybody who's carrying a weapon for protection that is not trained, that's, that's an injustice. Not only to themselves, their family, and the people around them who are counting on them to protect them. If Hey everybody, we're here with Rich from RS Flags, and Rich was telling me about his product line here and where he gets his wood from. Um, this is all recycled wood from crates that he gets uh, on his day job. Rich, so can you tell us a little bit about these crates? Yes, I, where I work at, I work at a machine shop, and we get these crates, they're like one foot by one foot square, 15, 16 feet long, and I cut them up, in like six foot lengths, put them in the back of my truck, bring them home, I'm out in my driveway, pulling nails out, and neighbors drive by and wave at me, and I just repurpose it to, uh, you know, anything you see here. I just leave the nail holes right in it. If there's a uh, knot in the wood, I leave that exposed. If the knot falls out, great. It just adds more character to the piece of wood. Yeah, I had noticed that uh, your product has kind of a rustic look to it. Um, and I kind of like the rustic look. It looks really good. Um, but you've got, you know, the Chevy bow tie insignia. Uh, and don't we got the 1911 down here. Yep. It's probably one of the only firearms you're going to leave here without a background check. Yep, there you go. <laughs> and, and it's a 1911, so automatically I like it. You know, and <laughs> guitars. I play guitar. Yeah. yeah. So and I love the the flag motif. Uh, they've got the thin blue line flag over here, which. You know, X -cop, of course, I like that. Um, but it's it's just a really nice product. Now, you cut all of these out by hand with like this little saw. Yes. Well, I have a. Um, well, first of all, I, I first of all I cut the boards into either inch or inch and a half or two inch, depending on the project that I'm working on. Uh -huh. Then I have a torch that I, I call it smoking the wood. I smoke it where it kind of brings the grain out a little bit, okay? Uh -huh. And then I stain it, I, I, I lay it all out, I stain them, glue them all together, I bandsaw everything out by hand or scroll saw, depending on the, the application, kind of like the Superman down here. I would drill a hole in them openings uh -huh. and then scroll saw that out, or the Punisher, say the Punisher up on top there. All right. So for like the eye holes and the new yeah, and the nose, you would use that yeah. technique. I would I would uh, scroll saw them all out, and then I would band saw the outside of them, and then I have a template I lay on there. I engrave all the stars by hand, and then uh, I again I just smoke the stars a little bit uh -huh. to give them that rusty, dirty kind of look, uh -huh. and then put a coat of sealer on the front, and here they are. It makes them look older and, and like they've been around a while, which is kind of nice. And I do want to let the audience know that if I it was impolite, Rich might have to give me the boot. <laughs> I, I know, we don't want to do well, these This right here is some concealment furniture that I have. Um, there's, a, there's a... Where you can put your firearm in there. All right, this is a paper towel holder. So it's like a magnetic latch? Yeah, there's a magnetic okay. latch, uh -huh. latch on there. Uh -huh. And then just sets on top. You know, you can take that off, put your paper towel on there. I'm running low on this one. Uh -huh. And then you can just take that, come down on the front, and open it up. We have them in white and in the regular. Mm -hmm. the, or the, you know, just the, the stain color. Mm -hmm. And then this here, there's a little catch in here. You push that up. And oh, something will drop down there. Okay, you can keep your firearm in there. Um, you know, you could, you know, ha have it next to your chair, and while you're watching TV, you can hide candy in there from your grandkids. Yeah. Or you know, keep the remote in there so mom don't find it. Yeah. You know, well, whatever. I gotta tell you, keeping the candy in there wouldn't be for the grandkids. It'd be try to keep it away from me because it tends to stick. Yeah. But if you're a Kansas City Chiefs fan, they got Arrowheads over here. They've just got so much here. Um, if you're, a, if you're a dog lover, you got dog paws. I mean, you got a dog here. I mean, yep. this has got a lot of unique stuff here. It's well, really cool. Just about every show we go to, um, someone will come up to us and say, hey, you know, you have a you, you have a bear, you have a horse. How come you don't have a pig? Well, yeah. I'll take their name and I'll, you know, I'll contact them or they'll contact me and I'll and they'll either they'll send me a, an outline of something that they would like this pig for an example or I will send them something and then they would say yeah I, that's what I want so I make a 
I, I'll make a, a product for them, and then I okay. figure, well, while I'm making one, I'll make two or three more, because if one person wants one, there's mm -hmm. probably somebody want else out there that might also want one. So if somebody has a special request, right. they can talk to you yeah. and you do special requests. Exactly. Well, exactly. that's very cool. Well, Rich, we really appreciate your time. Thanks well, thank you. Thanks for stopping today. by. All right. And I'm Bill 1911. We'll see you next time. What's okay. Website? You have a website. Uh, I have a Facebook page. Okay, you have a Facebook page. It's, and it's uh, on my business card. It's okay. R S Flags 1129. All right. Okay, so the Facebook page is R S Flags 1129. Okay, so this is uh, more of what we like to show you is that when you go to a gun show, it's not just guns. There's a lot of other stuff here that's really beautiful, some very artistic stuff. So, you know, come and see it, South Florida Gun Shows. Hey everybody, we're here with Paul Block from Block Sharper. Um, he's got a, a knife sharpening tool here that we we'll want to take a look at. Paul, can you tell us about your product? This is the Block Sharpener. My name is Paul Block and I make these. My sharpeners are different from others because they got a patented flex. They follow your knife's original cutting edge. You squeeze a blade in there nice and tight, make them flex, bring the back of the knife up. The rods will follow your original edge so you don't devalue well-made knives and you'll take a well-made knife shaving sharp. I'm also the only sharpener around doing a serrated edge knife. You can do any side, any kind of serrate, it will not damage them. You pocket knife, steak knife, bread knife, roll it in the middle. In the middle, my tool is opening up so it drops in between every tooth. Follows it from the tip to the valley, sharpens through the whole entire tooth. Another favorite with people are gardening clippers and scissors. Use the side of one rod, that's your cutting edge along the top. Hit it about 10 times, you'll see the shine come up, turn them, get a small burr, push the burrs off. Squaring corners is all you're doing, makes them like a knife. Now one other thing, hatchets, cleavers, machetes, outdoor tools. If it's got a cutting edge, run it through, it will get sharp. Block sharpeners are using titanium carbide pins. They got a high Rockwell over 69, makes them nearly impossible to wear them down and I'll sharpen some of the hardest steels around. Oop, let me get in there. Block Sharpener, we will sharpen every blade. BlockSharpener.net, come visit us today. Both Yorkies. He's, he's nine years, years old. This is Baxter. He's five years old. He used all the trees on the property. Well, not all, but a bunch of the good ones. And built himself a nice log cabin. So nice and kind. Three hundred square feet. Look at that. And it all looks the property. He knows we're talking about him. Oh yeah. And you can't even tell he cut any trees out of the property. I mean, wow. I was like impressed. I was like, damn, that's pretty good. Well, guess what? I think he's going to be on. He's going to be on YouTube too. Yeah, we'll get them on YouTube. Yeah, we'll get them on YouTube. There's a whole... Okay, this is just kind of a general discussion on knife edges. So if you focus down here on the paper, I'm going to draw some things, okay? Now, the first one is a very uh, shallow angle, okay? Now, this gives you an extremely sharp edge and it cuts through soft things like meat or paper or something like that extremely well. The only problem with it is if you hit something hard like a bone or something else like that, it's easy to roll this edge over and then it's not sharp anymore and doesn't cut very well. So if you sharpen your knife with a much 
steeper angle like this, okay, this is a much more rugged, rugged edge. It will take a lot more abuse without rolling over, okay? So this is better for general use things. Now, let's say you're going to have a knife where you're going to be chopping things like hacking on wood and stuff like that. There's just another kind of grind that you can do that's called an obtuse grind. Now, the obtuse grind is kind of rounded, okay? It comes to a sharp point, so it cuts well, but this is probably the most rugged of these knife points. So, it depends upon what you're doing with the knife. So, when you choose a sharpener, you want to choose a sharpener that's going to give you the best edge for what you're doing with it. It appears to be a biometric lock. Okay, see here? Biometric lock. And that way it, it's keyed to you. So the only person that can, that can open this thing is you. It works on your finger fry, I'm assuming. Now again, now that's a guess, I don't know because it's not my product. But um, they've got other ones here that I'm not sure whether this is biometric or not. This one doesn't appear to be. This one's a quick access. But, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it's a, a combination lock, but it also has a keyed override, it looks like, which is good. Yeah. All right, so there, there you have it. There's a technique called Go Mine, okay? And what it does is it uses nickel in with the steel and it ends up with this really high polished look to it and this feather it looks like it's on fire i mean it's just beautiful look at this that is one gorgeous knife and i was wondering if it might be a goat buy so i'm going to ask pete when he comes down here if that's what it is because it's really beautiful tell me about this knife set well i don't know it says please do not touch so i'm not touching guys how are you What's doing? going on? What's going on oh, here? Boy. What's happening? I gotta ask that, you a question. Yes. Is this Gomai? No. It looks it almost, looks almost it, like it. Almost, and it almost looks meteoric. It's this gorgeous. is a an executive chef that I do in a mosaic reverse feather, and it's only two steels. This is 15 and 20 nickel with a 10, 1095 background. So and it does have nickel in it. Absolutely, yes. Okay, so yes. It's, it's almost a go-by. Almost, I would probably, the, yeah. The, the, the construction technique is different. Yes, but the materials, yes. yeah, okay. Yes. Yes, it's I very high that. nickel chromium. It's really struck, stuck. Black bowling ball resin. It's beautiful. With a river of turquoise resin. Juma. Uh huh. And it's Juma. Gorgeous. And they are, these are giraffe bone. Uh -huh. This is a. A 1100 layer fingerprint twist, super twist Damascus. Okay, so that's twisted. All right. It's a modified twist. It's called a finger. It almost looks like a real finger. Right. Almost looks like thumbprints all the way down the blade. This yeah. is the uh -huh. same here, except this is the Japanese style handle. This is the European style handle in a blue resin honeycomb. Uh -huh. This is T6 aircraft aluminum honeycomb okay. with bowling ball resin. So sense, yeah. it's going to be, they're super light, mm -hmm. how, how but they're going to perform the board. and they're going to do it right on a beautiful Look twist. At Look at all the, the twists on beautiful it. Beautiful figure. And we, yeah. we did a sulfuric etch on this one. If you're right-handed, uh -huh. this is sandbar to match that. Feel that. How did that feel? Feels great. <laughs> right? That's one of my real wieners though. I was showing him something earlier about handles that are too thin, this way, and how yeah. you can grab them and you just twist the whole knife in your hand. They'll, they will roll. They'll roll on you. When you start batoning, they'll roll. I try to prevent that, and I try to keep my handle ergonomic to prevent right. the roll, but sometimes you're going to get a client that's going to say, Pete, I'm going to need a thin knife for concealment purposes, right. yeah. but that type of knife, you don't have to worry about rolling. Because it's too small to put that's you know an EDC now. Yeah. So that's not a problem. It's only on these bigger knives yeah. that that becomes an issue. Exactly. Yep. Cool. But other than that, uh, yeah, we've had a. This is, I'll show you one of my trackers. This is people's favorite color, the Maritime Navy Camo. 
got three different shades, two different yep. blues and a gray. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Of course, the these are all five sixteenths. This is a 1500 layer super twist, satinized with a satin it's pretty. flavor. Huge batoning cradle yep. for the guy that needs that extra knockdown power, you know? Mm -hmm. yep. Well, if I need knockdown power, I look at one of these. Yeah, you would just go with one of these. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever see that 1,800 layer Texas buoy? I, I did. I saw it. I, you know, I, I haven't ever put it up for sale. <laughs> I always keep it just to show people. Let yeah. me see it. You want to see it? Yeah. Yeah, it's magnificent. I mean, what, what well, night? They tell me, when they tell me, well, 1,100 nails, I tell them, well. well that's a noise. Look at that. Look, Look at that. Look at that steel. That's just, that's magnificent. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I saw in this the, before. In, in the lines of an old Texas style boat. Yep. You can't get more Texas than that right there. Look at how tight the figuring is here. Yes. It's just tight as can be. It's beautiful. That's throughout the entire blade. Both sides. This is ladder. Mm -hmm. At 900 layers. Mm -hmm. Measure this one back. Look at the compression on that. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? That's yeah. amazing. Sometimes I astonish myself. What? What it stays together after it's quenched and it's beautifully polished. You get to really appreciate the yeah. the hard work, mm -hmm. right? Isn't that beautiful. Yep. Here's something else. I'll show you. The lightest tanto you've ever seen, but don't let that fool you. I might sound like heavy knives. Yeah. This is a mosaic modified ladder. You mm -hmm. may never see one again. Check it out. It's only 416 layers, but look at the, the sculpturization. It's beautiful. Look at the pattern, how it's how it's been manipulated. Even in that ladder. Look at that, you can almost see like almost looks like a face right here. You know, like a like Isn't that a, different? Like a bulldog, you know? It's kinda cool. Or a monkey, yeah. Huh? Is that cool or what? It's very, very rugged. It's really good quality stuff. And the, the knife has a very flat profile to it, but that makes it nice. Uh, uh, light. This is extremely light for the size of the knife. But as you can see, it doesn't roll in my hand. It's good, it's good and tight. So that has a lot to do with these flatter sides on it. But it's got enough belly in here that you've got a good handle, you've got a good hold on that handle. And it's not going anywhere. So it's a neat knife, look at that. Yep, and there you go. You know, you can always see something new here at PNC Knives. Every time I come here, I find something else that I fall in love with. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. Do you endorse this it? This is patent. Yes, if you want a quick edge, a quick edge that's going to work in a situation where you're going to need that edge right then and there, block sharper will do what you need. Certain you want a refined edge with a stone, okay, it's apparent that that's not you're looking at. But when you're out in the bush and you need to get something done, It'll do it. that's what's, that's what's yeah. going to happen. It's going to get done. Perfect. I was Thank trying you. to. That's right. right. It's so, going to be for that quick, quick task yeah. when you're in trouble. Right. Yeah. So and it'll work fine for that. And, and it'll the other work thing fine. it'll work well for is blades that are hollow ground in here. Right. And you know you got a belly in it. That right. would work real well on that. Right. Yeah. We're, Good we're for skinny stone. knives and survival of bushcraft knives. Because yeah. bushcraft knives well, are going to be sturdy. So what, what, about, what about my machete at home? That'll work well on your machete, yeah. especially, but, but. What about my axe? Here it is, here it is. My here axe? Is, what about my axe? Here's the reality of everything. It'll work fine on your axe. You just have to get used to using the product. Right. Have you noticed his, his deal when he right. does it? Yeah. The, the, the more you do it, the more experience you get with it, right. the better you're going to become. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 2 o'clock, and our final concealed weapons permit class of the day is about to begin. Excuse me. Okay, we like.
like to show you unusual things from time to time. This is actually a triple barrel break open shotgun. It has three barrels instead of two. That's kind of unusual. See it? That's pretty cool, dude. I've never seen one like that before. This is a 1918 British Enfield. The caliber is 303, uh, which is uh, similar to a 308 bullet. Uh, ballistically, it was similar. Very similar. Now, this one is a World War One rifle. This one has what they call the uh, the ladder sight. The, yeah, uh, it's called ladder, or it's also called volley sight, because this. You were able to fire up to 2,000 yards away with this rifle, uh, and this is a number. It's, a, it's called a number one Mark III yep. because of the design. Uh, this has the full wood stock. It's got the bayonet. Now this bayonet is not the original one. This is uh, it is original, but it's 1906 instead of uh, 1918 like the rest of the rifle, and, uh, and it was uh, a bolt action rifle. It held 10 rounds. It was the first rifle yeah, that held 10 magazine. rounds. Yeah. It has a box magazine, but it's made to feed with stripper clips. Right. So you simply stuff the stripper clip in there and load it yeah. five at a time, and it held 10 rounds. Mm -hmm. Now, this badge here is the sharpshooter's badge. Uh, this badge you would only get if you were able to fire this rifle at 100 yards 20 times in one minute and hit the target. Hit the target yeah. That's how you get Which the uh, sharpshooter's yeah. badge. And it's got the British crown and it's got the Enfield rifles crossed like that. Yeah. And it says SHTLE, which is uh, actually familiarly they used to be called Shetley. Yeah. <laughs> because of the Shetley. But it's made in the uh, Sheffield plant in England. Not uh, in Pakistan, where they produce also in uh, some of the countries like Canada and so forth. And there it is, it's 106 years old, and there it is. There it is. Okay, everybody, here we go. Our next one is April 27th, 28th, here at the Miami Dade Youth Fairgrounds. Uh, tell you what, come and see it because they've got so much here. Um, if you're looking for a gun, believe me, they got plenty of guns. But there's also other stuff to look at too. And don't forget to come and visit us at askbill1911.com. We have some new merchandise for sale, and we'll see you there.